me just change some things here. Um, we're gonna do, how do I do this? Hold on. Oh, do you have any pieces? Goodness gracious. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, let's go to Murray and Welch. Um, I need to grab something. That's right. All right. Too loud, probably. Maybe I'll lower the volume a bit. I've just been listening to this in the background. There we go. So, we are good. I'll switch browsers here. <coughs> so, as I've said in the past, um, Part of the reason for this channel is also to learn things. Uh, so I'm going to be, you know, RPing all the time and that's fun. But I also spend some of my weekend um, trying to learn different things. And so um, one thing I thought I would do is just like start from the fundamentals. I, uh, a little bit about me, I'm, um, I build uh, machine learning AI systems as a job, um, and I'm completely self-taught. And so my education is very scattered. I mean, on, you probably can't hear me, maybe you can. Um, on the one hand, you know, I teach university courses on introduction to machine learning and things like that, right? And um, I just finished a semester teaching at Chapman University. Um, on the other hand, like I never had a formal computer science uh, background. So I went straight into sort of machine learning and et cetera like that. So more mathy, less, um, it's like mathy and, and practical but less computer science background. So in my free time, when I'm not like studying machine learning, deep learning, AI, chatbots, et cetera, right? Large language models. I also try to educate myself on things that I'm not super familiar with. Um, and I know enough to be dangerous, right? But I like to, I like to be subtle. So I'm gonna go, th I've been doing other um, courses that were kind of interesting, but I found this one and I thought it was cool. Like what if I just started from fundamentals and went from there? Ultimately, the real learning for me is going to be Java because I've never coded in Java or I've coded in Java. I haven't coded um, formally in Java. Most of my coding is in Python. And um, I figured, like, I'm going to do this. So I do this for a bit because uh, I'm already going to be doing it. I might as well do it live. And if people have questions, I can help out and we can learn things together. And then later, um, a few hours, I'll be doing RPing. Uh, but first, I'm going to do this. So I do this every once in a while. You'll see it on the channel. If it interests you, great. If it doesn't, RPing happens a bit later. Um, for me, this is really fulfilling. I really believe in self-education and I believe in uh, the notion of um, living your life not simply for pleasure, but for also for, for kind of gaining the knowledge of the universe that you can you know, have the time and the energy to absorb. Um, so it works for me. And maybe it's going to be something interesting to you. So let's just go through this. I'm going to skim over a lot of this stuff because I'm familiar with a lot of it. But um, if anything is confusing, literally just chat me and I will talk about it. I love to teach. It's one of my favorite things. As I said, I'm a university lecturer, I guess. Um, so it's, it's sort of a vocation of mine. All right. 
so let's go through um, array indexing. We know our, off the bat that Java is just like Python and that it's going to start array indexing at zero instead of at one. It, for practical matters, that just means when you're counting from zero to n that you're going to do n minus one when you're trying to get the length of something. We're going to start with arrays, which makes a lot of sense because arrays are sort of like the fundamental object of most programming languages. Okay, so what do we say? It's say here we're gonna we're gonna go through a little bit of the education and then we're gonna go straight to the challenge parts and just like try to solve problems together and learn in the process. I find doing is much more informative and much more interesting than just reading shit. Um, and I love to read, but okay. So it says an index makes it possible to access the contents of an array directly. Yes. So an array is just gonna be a list of objects. We're all very familiar with intuitively with an array, even if you don't no computer science um arrays can store primitive data type values so int character floats boolean byte short long etc okay so these are different object types you don't really need to know what they are but int makes sense integer is going to be usually a 32-bit integer that is an integer with 32 values um character is going to be you know string floats are going to be some amount of as you might imagine uh, digits, but with decimals, booleans, bytes, etc., etc. All right, so you have one-dimensional arrays and you have multi-dimensional arrays. So you can think of that as just like an array or a matrix. Um, so that's basically the, the what that's about. All right, in the array de declaration, reference of an array is created. Okay, so you can create an array like this with a data type and array name or you can put the, the list at the end of the data type and the array name. So in Java, what's gonna happen is you have a data type next to an array uh, or any object that tells the compiler what the object is, is about. Um, so let's look down here as an example. Uh, you've got this class object. The class says, okay, here's a thing that's happening and we're calling it 1D array. That is a one dimensional array. Uh, first, in Java, it starts like this. It's going to start with public, static, void, main. What does that mean? Public meaning it's accessible to anyone. Static mean it's going to be a thing that just comes back. Void meaning there's not really going to be anything returned from this object. And this is just the inputs that Java expects from every main argument in a class. So this is a common, uh, common structure. Anything between these two brackets here means an action. Uh, anything between, between these two is a condition. So the condition is there's a string of arguments being passed that are our list. Okay. Um, and as we saw here, just like above, you're going to have a data type and then the you know array name. So in this case, it's going to be args as an array. Fair, fair enough. So here is going to be an integer with an array uh, as a list or an integer list as an array. Either way, it's the same thing, but it's just two ways to do the same thing. So you can run it and you'll be happy. Next, we have, um, let's see, array initialization. So you can create an array. You can create a new uh, array of some type and some size. That's what's going on here. And every statement ends with a semicolon. Fair enough. So we could run this. This is the one dimensional array class that we saw from before. Every class is going to have this main, well, most classes are gonna have this main function, not every class. Um, and it's going to be an integer array uh, called my array. It ends with a semicolon. We're going to say a new version of my array is going to be of length four. So the, the thing that we're learning here is that an array can be dynamic or it can be static. And so the first lesson we're going to learn is about this idea of arrays. The second or static arrays, what we're going to be looking at are static arrays. The second idea is dynamic arrays, right? Arrays with not fixed lengths. That's what a linked list is. You might have heard of it, maybe not. Um, so we're going to go into linked lists and then stacked queues, graphs, trees, um, advanced trees, heaps, hash tables, and then we're going to be done. So good stuff. It's going to be fun. Uh, so here we've got, we're saying, give me a static array of length four. And the idea here is that if a computer knows ahead of time, like the most efficient kind of array is a static array because it is a fixed memory. So when a computer calls it, it doesn't need to hold memory off for the array. It just says, this is my array, it's length four, 
I have memory for it. I know where it is. It is always there. Great. A dynamic array, which we'll see later, is going to be variable, right? And therefore, it's going to be more complex. So we've got an array of length four, um, but we don't have anything in it. Um, great. Next, what we're doing is we're saying... We're going to access elements in an array, right? So we could do this. Okay, that's what I thought. Cool. Uh, so here's here's what's, what's going to happen. We're going to go through a for loop here. So we're already exposed to for loops. For loops are as follows. For some action between these two parentheses, something we're going to do. I'm sorry. For some condition between these two parentheses, some action is going to take place between these two brackets. All right. So you, we can, we'll go in one, one by one of these types of things. But in this case, it's going to be, there is some object I of integer type. So it's going to be an integer object that is equivalent to the value zero. I, this object here that we just created int I is an integer and it is less than, a, it is less than the length of my array. And then we, we do a semicolon here. And then we're saying increase the value of i by 1. That's what this means. So we're saying for some object i, as long as i is less than the length of my array, increase the length of my, or increase the value of i by 1. OK. So we go through and we say, as that condition holds, what are we doing? We're saying print out, this is just how Java prints out objects, print out some line from my array i. And it's printing out zero every time. Why? Because there are no values in this array. We didn't give it any, so it's just going to be four zero values. So it goes through and it says the index at zero, the index at one, the index at two, the index at three, the index at, oh, we can't do any further because this is of length four. And 0, 1, 2, 3 is four objects. 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So this would stop before it went to index 4. Because if it went to index 4, we would have gotten an error. It's a static array. And so it's going to cause an issue. All right. So that's that. Next, we can also declare and initialize an, uh, the array in one step. So we could say this, we could say create of some data type list or data type list here, some new data object of size X. So you could do that. Everything we did here, these two things combined into one, it would just be int my array equals new int blah, blah, blah. Great. So we're going to do that right here. Yep. And it's going to return the same exact thing. And it did. Great. Adding or updating elements in an array. OK, so we understand that you can create some array of length four of some arbitrary length. What are we going to do now? Now what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, adding or updating elements in an array. OK, so obviously the next step for an array, it seems to me, is to say at some index value in an array, we should be able to assign a value. I know this may seem low level and maybe even kind of boring, but we get through this one thing quickly and we're going to get to actually complex and interesting problems that are applicable that I go through every single day when I'm doing my work. Um, and by the way, you follow along here, you do your own studying and I guarantee you can get a well-paying job. Not that that's the only thing that matters. It's actually an interesting job. And that's ultimately, as long as you can pay your bills, the thing that is you know compelling. An interesting, compelling job in this industry without having to pay for a degree like I did. I, that is, I didn't. I didn't pay for a degree. I'm self-taught. And you can really work with some of the most intellectual, most interesting people in the world, often who also don't have degrees. I know people who uh, didn't graduate high school. I know people who didn't graduate college. And they are well off. They are influential in the industry. The great thing about this field, in my opinion, is it actually is very insensitive to degrees. Um, 
there are definitely places where they're like, you don't have a degree, get out of here. But I found by and large, like fang companies, like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, uh, Netflix, whatever, like they don't need you to have a degree. They just need to know you can do the job. So if you can teach yourself these things and you're interested in this field, that's, that's it. And by the way, the whole point is you're learning something very compelling and very interesting. And in my opinion, um, that says something about the world in and of itself. Once you get to more intricate, interesting problems. And it also teaches you a lot of interesting qualities um, about how to live your life. So all in all, I think it's sort of worth it. Anyway, that's my spiel. I'm going to keep having those that spiel time and time again. All right. So you have some integer array called my array, and you're creating a new list of length four for that object. Now what we can do is this, like we're, we're, you know, explicitly saying, okay, index zero is going to be length, it's going to be value 10. Index one is 20, two, 30, three, 40. Great. So that's the whole list because of four, we start counting at zero. And then you could go through and what you'd get is the values of that array. But then you could update the value. You could say, well, what's wrong if I just went to this list and changed the value of 40 to value 900? There's no reason why we can't. And if we ran this, what you're going to get is first those values, then the same values, except that the fourth one is going to be 900. <laughs> Indeed, that's what happens. All right. Adding elements using array literal. I don't know what this is. Let's see. If we know the size and values in advance, we can also use array literal for adding elements in the array. What does this do? So if we know, oh, pfft. so instead of doing this, right, where we just list out, this is pretty, um, this is pretty arduous to write this whole thing out. We don't want to do that. So what we do is you can assign a list of the values using the, these brackets right here and just do the same thing. It's just, okay, I'm just going to create the list right here as I go. If I have the values, oftentimes you don't, but sure, fair enough. It's going to be the same thing though, as, as though we did before. Great. How are arrays stored in memory? This is kind of interesting. In Java arrays are dynamically allocated. Arrays are stored in memory using a reference pointer, which points to the first element. For example, if we create an array of size three and name it my array, then the variable will point to the start of the array. So it's going to point to zero. The only drawback of using arrays is that we have to specify the size of the array during the time of the instantiation. I've mentioned this before. Arrays are static. Linked lists are dynamic. That means the size remains fixed and cannot be extended. We get a chunk of memory an array, uh, in an array, and it's not dynamic, it's actually static. If we want to add more elements, we will need to have to create a new array, copy all the items from the old array to the new one, and then insert the new element. Okay. So we're done there. You already know enough about arrays to be pretty dangerous. Oops, I did not mean to copy that. I don't care about that. Okay, so now let's do a two-dimensional array. What is a two-dimensional array? Well, a two-dimensional array is a matrix. Okay, makes sense. Arrays can also store references as values. These references can point to anything. They can be a reference to an object or any other data structure. Before we move forward, let's briefly discuss what pointers are. Pointers are references. References are used to explicitly store, uh, they are references to explicitly store memory locations that hold a value or an object. Anytime you build an object in Java, you basically create a reference to, an, uh, to that object. And by the way, that's in most computer languages that you're using uh, low on the low memory. Okay, to do two dimensional arrays. A two dimensional array is an array or of references, that is pointers, that holds pointers to other arrays. These arrays are preferably used when you want to put together data items in a table or matrix-like structure. Matrices are widely used in the field of game development. Okay, sure. So if you want to do game development, we are required to store and update the location of a player at each second. I mean, matrices are used in absolutely everything. The whole world is a matrix. And by the way, a multi-dimensional matrix is called a tensor. And that's when we start getting into machine learning. All right. Take a look at the figure below to get a good understanding of what two-dimensional array looks like. A matrix. It's a matrix. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. Array of int type pointers containing the base addresses of the arrays to point to. So these are the, this is going to say 1, 2, 
2-2-3-2-4-2. Interesting that it would say that. But 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 I just noticed the pattern. I didn't I'm learning Java right now. Like I don't know. Um this is a uh this is saying the length of the array or that is the the last index of the array and then this is the I guess the first the second, the third, and the fourth. Cool. Array placed at uh, address 0, 4, 2, right? So that would make sense because 1, 2, 3, 4 of length 2, and we, we go at the 0th index. I make it, I like, this is, I'm just trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. Explanation. If we take a look at the structure of the two-dimensional array, we get, you know, we get it. We get the idea. So. Initialization in two-dimensional arrays is done using two values for the number of rows and columns. Look at the following code to see how 2D is declared in, um, and initialized in Java. Okay, so three rows, three columns, uh, and then we get two brackets here. So now it's a two-dimensional array. And by doing that, we can say here we're going to create an array of rows three, columns four. Now, this is really important. This is actually a standard um, in talking about matrices and, and numbers in general for like linear algebra. This idea of the rows come first, then the columns. So when you say, what row are you at? Are you at the first row, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth? And which column are you at? The first, the second, the third, or fifth, right? So you've got to, you start with the row and then the column. It doesn't go column, then row. So here, row first and and then column, we're saying there are three rows, four columns. And then you're going to print it out, or you're going to print out you have successfully created a two-dimensional array. Okay, cool. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Anything else that is new or noteworthy here? I feel like no. I feel like we are Gucci. Cool. Let us continue. All right, we're speeding through this the next thing we're and then we can just actually start doing some programming challenge and uh and we'll take a break then i'll do rp adding elements in two dimensionals arrays okay so again we're creating a three by four matrix that is three rows four columns of some integer matrix or two-dimensional array however you want to call it in a classic uh just thing this basically says start when you see this you can just think start when it comes to um to uh, classes in Java. Then we're going to the zeroth row, the first column, that is the zero, that is the first actual uh, row, and column one is not column, it is not the first column, it is the number one column, which is after zero, so that's the second column. So it's really the first row, second column, assign the value 10. Now if we go through here and we check that array, what's going to happen we're gonna get the value 10. So that's that. Can you look at the following code and point out what's wrong? I like these problems because now you're it's actually checking your understanding, which is very important. All right, so let's just read this out and see if we can see what's wrong. Okay, well, I see a problem right away. What, do you see it? I mean, I don't, I don't think this is gonna work. I don't know for sure. I am not a Java, de Java expert. <laughs> But this is saying create a 10 row matrix with no columns. Well, if there's no columns in a matrix, you have, a, you have an empty matrix. This is probably gonna error out. So we probably need a column in there. But let's see if we can do something else. Or like, let's see if there's any other issues. Okay, so we say for some condition, do a thing. For another thing in the, already in the condition, do a thing. The condition is for starting at the zeroth row up to the ninth row, because again, we start, we stop at 10, so we should stop at nine, that is. Um, J equals zero, so we're doing the same thing. We're gonna go through and we're gonna get J, but we can't get J because it's an empty matrix because we haven't assigned this. So the solution is we should assign 10 here, I think. Is there any other issue? I don't think so. So we run this, it's gonna cause an error. 
I'm just going to point to, uh, okay, let's see here. Exception and thread, blah, 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 blah. You should learn to read uh, errors if you, you don't know how to. The best way to learn is just to look at errors a lot and start to understand. I don't know what main Java 8 is. Um, I assume it means the, I don't know what 8 is. It's not a very good, it's not a very informative uh, exception, but we do kind of know what's gonna happen. It's this issue here. The code above will give a null pointer exception. The reason is that in line four, we only allocate memories for the rows. Great, so I was right. Have a look at the following code that we have fixed for you. Okay, so we you can create a matrix without, oh, okay, cool. So then it, what, what happened was you can actually create this, this object. And so it erred, I think at line eight here, because this, I, I, that's what I thought it was doing. I thought it was gonna be line eight, but I wasn't sure because I didn't understand. Um, because at, this is the only, this is the first point we call a jth column in which the jth column doesn't exist. And so since it doesn't exist, we get an issue. All right, so with that in mind, we, if we come down here, you can create this object, but what it does is first it says, create a new integer 10 in the, excuse me, in the ith row. So since it is getting populated with the value 10, J now exists. And so now this should work where it is a matrix of all tens. I'm guessing. One, zero, one, what are we printing out here? For my array, I, I, J, for I equals int J, or is it just creating a 10? Ah, it, I apologize. It's not gonna be all tens. It's creating a, this is useful. Um, again, I'm gonna be learning and being wrong a ton of times. And one of the things that I think is useful about when I'm doing these sessions is like, being wrong is okay. That is one of the best things about uh, programming is that you can be wrong a thousand times and be right the thousand first time and that's okay. Like I, the, re, the way I got good at programming and the way I got good at data science and the way I got good at machine learning eventually and engineering was I had to do these things. I was interested in these things. I didn't know how to do these things. I tried the things. I was wrong at the things. I was wrong at the things. I got right at the things. I learned patience about being wrong. And in doing so, I was able to multiply my efforts by just continually going at a problem until I kind of figured it out or got through what I needed to get through. Um, there's some bad habits that I learned along the way. I'm trying to overcome those, but largely that's what, um, that's what you need to, you know, like someone who is patient and is comfortable with being wrong and just trying to figure things out is going to do very well in this industry. Um, okay. So you go through I and J, uh, ba, 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 ba. and so it, what I realized is this is actually creating a 10 because this is the, uh, the array at the row I and is creating a new, I forgot this new here, this new 10 column, um, row for this object. And then what's happening is what we're have we're, we're, what's going on here is at the I row and the J column we are doing i plus j. Well, i plus j is gonna look like this. It's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, I should say. And then it's gonna keep going up and up and up and up and up. Yes, that's what I think. So it's gonna be i is zero, j is zero. So zero plus zero is zero. i is zero, j is one. So one, i is zero, j is two, all the way up to 10. Then i is gonna go up to one and J is going to be one, so now it's gonna be two. Then it's gonna be J keep going up while I remains the same. So it's gonna look like that. Then iterative, 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 until again, you get to both of them at nine, which case it should be 18 is the highest value, and it is. So that's what's going on there. Great. So we learned some things about how, uh, I guess, two-dimensional arrays work in Java. Fun stuff for us. Okay, so now it's actually giving us a problem, which is more interesting. Um, 
I was actually curious, can you do three-dimensional arrays? Let's see, first this. Let's say there is a class of 30 students and we want to store the grades for each of the courses, six courses in total. Is there a way we can map all this information using the knowledge we've covered? Yes. All we need to do is to keep the first column, column zero, fixed for students and the rest of the columns to store the grades. We will have to follow a specific order, blah, blah, blah. So there will be 30 rows and six columns. That makes sense. Now we can calculate the student's position. Great. And then this was what I was curious about. Like, can you have an n-dimensional array? I mean, the answer is yes, but just like two-dimensional arrays, arrays, we can do three-dimensional arrays. These arrays are an extension of two-dimensional arrays, but are slightly more complex. Uh, you could do three-dimensional arrays, et cetera. Yeah, you should be able to have an n-dimensional array because first of all, you should be able to make any dimensional array um, since there's no reason to limit it. The only limitation is memory, right? So we're good in there. Okay, so we're already like, pretty much understood about what arrays are and we can now solve a problem. Okay. Challenge lessons. The method definition is always given in the problem statement, blah, blah, blah. When you do get compile errors, they will sometimes refer to the line coming no, uh, code, which you did not write. That is fine. That is just our evaluation code. Although rest assured that our code compiles. When in doubt, to refer to the solution given into the paste in. Sometimes you're going to have to return from methods in a form of aligns with test cases. Your solution may not be incorrect, but your form of returning might not be what the evaluation code expects. For example, you might return a number, but our in case uh, returns an array. Watch out for that. In other words, be careful. You might have written something correct, but it's not what we expect. In this problem, you have to implement the int remove even r method, which removes all the even elements from the array and returns back an updated array. Okay, let's do it. Method prototype. Got it. Ooh, this is really nice. They break it down very nicely here. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay. So, if something is even, then we should be able to remove it. So, if we put an array of these numbers in, we should only get these numbers out. Can we do it? The answer is yes, and quite easily. Uh, so let's go figure that out. Let's switch to our code and uh, go from there. So we're actually gonna do some coding here and yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's create a problem session. Let's call this um, remove evens. And then it's gonna be called uh, remove evens because uh, in Java you the first letter is lowercase and then this I think it's called Pascal case and the second letter is uppercase pretty sure that's how we do it okay so let's take what the code they gave us just to make it easier for ourselves we don't need this save it and they're gonna say oh what's what's the issue the declare package does not remove uh, that's fine i'm pretty sure if i shut this yeah we're good okay so this is the this is the 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 method they gave us but before i do that i am going to oops i am going to grab uh ba -ba -ba -ba. A some, so what, what did we say before? We said public static void main condition string args list. There we go. So this way we could run remove even, and that would be um, some object that we create. So we'll call it this. And. Um, I'm gonna say new, oh, it's gonna be like that. It's gonna look like this. Let's call this test. Hold on. So it's of that type. And I believe, what else, what else? Check remove even. What else do we need here? What am I missing? Uh, the whole point again is that I don't know all the answers. Um, and that is 
okay. We're okay with that here. It's gonna be... Oh, did I put a new there? I did not. There we go. Great. So we got our answer. The because we have a the type is, is the class right here. Then what we need to do is give it a name. This is the object that we're going to reference to. It's going to have a pointer to that object. Then we're going to want to create a new version of it because it doesn't automatically create a new version of it. And in order to do that, we have to say this is a new version of this integer type and it is a class. So we give it a those uh, parentheses to instantiate it and we are good to go. So now what we could do is we could say test dot remove even provide it some uh, numbers and then we'd know we're we're on our way and then do this but removing even is going to be set uh, it's going to not be happy because it's not being provided an integer array so what we need is to first create an array of integers so let's take the test case from from before uh we saw before which is uh, boo, 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 boo. it's going to be of type or it's gonna be of these values right here. It's going to be, but we need to give this, what do we have to do here? Int, and I believe a list, so we could call it this, and we are we are okay. So it expects to return an integer list, and it expects an integer list provided. So far, so good. So we'd say, of this argument, let's call it, instead of R, let's call it, um, test and this should be called um we'll call this class so this makes a lot more sense class because this is class okay so we provide test to the argument and this says this room static remove method should be accessed in a static way the static should be accessed in a static way seems to me like it is static uh oops I could say okay well we don't need it so maybe we can say uh, we'll do that later I'm trying to solve that I don't know what that is but let's ignore that for now and then um, let's go back to here so we actually have to build the algorithm now so we are providing some values here and we actually want to assert um, that this equals uh, can we do double equals equals and then say we want it to equal the answer so let's just give it call it the answer int answer I know that's not how you spell answer it's fine equals uh, and then we want we know what the numbers have to be the, the numbers have to be one five and is there what other odd number is there two four five six, oh three three one five three so this should be equal to this and i don't know sometimes what i do is i go to uh chat gpt which i think is an, one of the best inventions in the last uh i don't know how long for human knowledge and i ask for a hint i don't go for um I don't look for answers generally. I try to just get hints for things that I don't understand so I can kind of see what's wrong and just solve them quickly. Remove is declared as a static, which means it should be called on the class itself rather than an instance remove of them. Ah. Ah, okay. So we can just do this. Get rid of this. So that should work. And then what's going on here? I see. Okay, so in Java, there's a way that you compare arrays, and it's this. You say import like this, 
Then you say arrays, which is kind of interesting, equals arrays one, arrays two. So we can say this, we can say, let's give this as an answer. Let's call this um, output. We'll say this equals output, but we need to call this something. So it's gonna be an int and it's going to be there. And now this works. Okay, so what do we have? We have our test object, which is an array of values and what we know the answer is gonna be and then what our output is. And then we wanna compare these two things. And this is the last point that I would need to make. Arrays has equals, and then you can just do answer versus uh, output. And if, you can even say this, if um, this is true, so if it's on a true statement, then do a thing. And so we get a system uh, output, system out print ln, uh, and we'll say the answer was correct, plus, and then we'll get the output, which is this. Or otherwise, we'll say else, do another thing. And the other thing we're gonna do is the answer was incorrect. Cool. And what is wrong here? Else, delete this token. Uh, we don't, I guess we don't technically need it. We could also just do this. Great. No, 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 no. We do want else because otherwise it's gonna, why are you saying that's wrong? Maybe, there we go, that's why, great. Okay, so we are almost there. We still need to solve the actual answer, but we've built it out properly. And so since this is a, by the way, I didn't answer this, but since this is a static class, this is return a static uh, method, all, all you need to do is just call the class itself. You don't have to initialize it or anything, and you can just use the method. So we're just gonna use the method right away, and that's what the issue was. Uh, okay, so we are almost done. We've got our testing logic and everything. We just need to figure out the answer. So the answer is replace this plain over, uh, placeholder return statement with your code. Good enough, we can do that. So we have this object result and it is creating this new int object whatever. Well, we could just do this. Um... Why is this happening? R cannot be resolved. I guess we can't. Interesting, why is this here? I actually don't know the answer to that. Hmm, let's see if we can solve this ourselves without looking for a hint here. Uh, we could create the length of the class and put that in here. So we can do, because it's already a list, we know it's on the list. So we can just say length. And now we are creating a new n length list of, uh, of, of length r, whatever. Then we could say for some condition, some action. So let's do the condition first. I will do int i equals zero um, as so long as i is less than r dot length, then add i plus one. Then finally we do result i is of value r i. And let's see here, these are the same length, so you can just put it in there, but we're not done yet. Oh, we don't want of our length, my mistake, because it's going to be of length, whatever we create. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Why create, why, what is this? I need to know what this means. It 
It's an empty array of integers. I mean, I figured that. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense though, because the problem with this is it's a fixed length and we don't know what the length is gonna be. So I don't like this at all. Rather, I would just um, first try to find the length of the list that we're gonna, we're gonna need. So we can just go through, this is what I would do. If I was not given an answer and I was just gonna go into this blind, I would go in and try to get the ith value of um, of the array, right? Then I would do modulo to, this is, I have to do a condition here. If, if condition, the condition is this, equals equals zero, then do this thing, else do another thing. All right, what, 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 what's going on here? What is modulo two? Okay, so in math, a modulo is saying, take divide by something, right? And what is the remainder of that thing? So it's useful for when you're trying to determine, hey, 768 divided by 43, what is the, what's the, what's, what is the remainder of that? If it is zero, that we know something. We know that there's no remainder. It means it's even. And any even number divided by two would have mod, or any even number divided by two will have a remainder of zero. So any even numbered modulo two would also be zero. And so what we're saying here is, get me the remainder of any even numbers or odd numbers. And basically what this means is we can gen then just remove it. So actually we could be even more sly here and say we only care about modulo ones because a modulo, modulo one, any odd number divided by one is, sorry, any odd number divided by two is gonna have a modulo of one. It's gonna have a remainder of one because you're always gonna have plus one. The definition of an odd number is 2K plus one. So, in this example here, we can just say, give me the odd number. If it is an odd number, then add it to an array. But we don't know what the length of the array is going to be. This is the thing that I don't quite understand. If we don't know the, the length of the array ahead of time, can we, we can't insert it into an array that exists. So what would we do? Can you... What you could do is create an array where you know what it can't be. I know this much. I know that the array cannot be longer than the length of the original array, right? So I could do r.length here that, from this thing that they gave me before, right? I can say, give me an a length if, uh, of the original array if they're all odd numbers, the max it can be is the length of the array. But it could also be smaller, and that's okay. Then you would just have an empty array where there's, so this is what, why they gave it to us, I think. So if this is the case, then you can just say result of i is now equal to ri. Otherwise, we don't even need this else statement. We just say pass. We just say pass. And I don't even think I need that. So now what's gonna happen, let's just return, let's check our logic one more time. We go through, we say create, by the way, here's a note. When you're coding, especially for yourself and your learning, it does not matter what you do. This is your, this is your canvas. I am not an artistic person in the least. I am just not an artistic person. Maybe like with words, but not with like a canvas, right? Like with painting and stuff, I'm not good with that. Um, but this is our canvas. We can write what we want. We can comment what we want. We can make mistakes if we want. It doesn't matter. And so what that means is 
you can write comments up the wazoo. It doesn't have to look pretty. You should not feel self-conscious or ideally you don't feel self-conscious. I'm trying not to tell you what you should or should not do, but I encourage you to, to comment liberally in your practice code. Uh, so in this case, let's leave a comment just for our understanding because who's gonna who's it gonna hurt? No one. Uh, the answer is, so let's see here. Why are we doing this? At most, the array array result will be its original length else shorter. Great. So remember, arrays in Java equal static. Cool. Next, you run through each of these, uh, each of the elements of the array, and you append them to the resulting array only if they are odd. And then you return the result. Now, here's the final thing we're going to do. We are going to run the debugger in the code. The debugger is a way to break up the, the problem and see what the results are and what the values in memory are as they're going through. So let's go through here and for our first run, simply check our answers. So we go through, I'm running the debugger. So what we see here is we're gonna say there is some array. It is of length seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That makes sense. Oh, we can see it right there of, of types integer. We see that the value of array is, are these, great. Now we're stopped here. Let's see what result are, is. Now we have result it is of length one at 14. I don't know what at 14 is. It means that there are, it is zero seven. I think I did this wrong, but we'll see. So the first one we, we put in, we get the, we check to see since it's uh, I equals zero, uh, whether or not it is uh, divisible, whether or not it's odd. Uh, and we go through and we get a result of it is because we're inside the if statement now and we're checking this and we get the result. It is now the first value is now one because it is odd. Now this is what's key here. Will result append another value? I, I don't know. It will not because it's an out of bounds error. So I don't know why they gave us this. What I'm going to do is return. Um, let me go back to the notes here of how they created this. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. You can create it just by doing. Yeah, bruh. I don't know why they did it in the other way. Couldn't they just do it like this? Of no, length. And do we need new int four? This should work. Int result new int. There we go. Now let's try it and the debugger. I was really not confident with the other method. So, we're, so the reason that we had an error before is because it only created a single value and that I was confused on why that occurred. Now, if I look at result, hopefully it's as long as I think it should be. It is, it's as long as I think it should be, which is the length of array. So now I'm much more confident that we can go through. Okay, the first value is one. The second, va the third value is five. Uh, and the last value is going to be three. All right. So that did work, but we have another problem and I don't know the solution here. Um, so let's just get the answer. Uh, we know enough that I'm just, I'm comfortable saying it's some nuance of Java that I need to know.
Let's see. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. That's annoying as... F that is just annoying. Okay. So... This is interesting. Basically, this is how it's going to work. Um, <laughs> I, I saw this sort of right away, and I didn't quite understand why this was happening. Basically, the only way we can do this with a static array, because we're not using dynamic list, uh, we're not using linked list. In linked list, this would be much easier. We just start with a node. You'd keep adding nodes for the dynamic list. But in this case, since we're working with arrays, which are static, we have to do the following. It's so weird, but here we go. We would say as follows. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. For i int i equals zero, while i is less than r dot length, plus plus, or i plus plus, uh, which is, you know, add i. Go through the array, so r, um, and then this is where I need to add another. We'll call this index equals, we'll call this odd count, which is an int. I'm not used to doing types like this. Int, uh, and it's me new int, or we can just call it an int of zero. That's fine because it's a primitive, so we don't need to do it a new. Um, a primitive is a, is a, is a, is an object type in Java that comes with the base code of Java such that when you, you don't have to do this, right? You don't need to do that because it's a primitive. You could, it, it already knows what it is. So you just say it, uh, cool. So we go through and we get the ith value and then you check to see if it is odd. And if it is odd, then you do index, or we'd say odd count, plus equals one. And I think you can just do this. Great, odd count, odd count. Now, why are you unhappy? The value of the local is not used. I guarantee you it is used. It's, uh, you can do, ooh, this is interesting too. I don't even need to do plus equals one. I could just do plus plus, fun. Uh, but it is definitely used. Oh, we don't care about that. Um, and we're fine. We do odd count is, is this. Then we know the length that the list should be because we just put odd count here. So now we're creating the exact length of the array that we need. And now we go through and it should work. So if I ran this one more time, we've already got odd count, which is three, which means result should be of length three. And it is. And then we go through. Let's see if this works. Okay, something is wrong. So let's see one more time what we did wrong here. Ah, I know what the issue is. Okay. There's one last thing we need to do. Th that's the issue. So the pr problem before was that we could use I and I in this because we were assuming, hey, you've got a list of N length. It's never going to be greater than N length, so we're fine. We don't need this comment anymore. It's not applicable. So what we need to do instead now is have a different index for result that we then that which we have for R. And we can do that pretty easily. We can say index equals zero. And then every time that index is used, we do index plus plus. Now index is going to be uh, greater. So now if we run this, we're not going to have an error that we were having before. We run it in the debugger. We run it through and we look at result. Okay, five is in there. We see five right there. 
and now we have three. And what we expected to have was one, five, three, and we've just solved our first challenge, y'all. Well, in this system, we've solved challenges before, but there you go. We just solved a, a Java challenge uh, removing in, even integers. So one last thing I'll say is that when you're actually using Java code, what you have to do is compile your code. The debugger will do it implicitly for you in the IDE. That's the environment that we're uh, coding in. But uh, if you, you know, you really do actually have to compile your code so that it's going to create this class right here. So that then you can use, you can run Java C. You can write Java, your Java code. And, ooh, interesting. We're getting back, what are we getting back? Hmm. Because it's just, it's not a string object. Uh, that's interesting. <coughs> How would we... I think you would have to just remove this because you can't, um, yeah, you can't put the actual value in here. This isn't like Python. So we can re, if I ran this again, see how I changed that code and now I'm running Java on it again, you're going to get, well, shit, that shouldn't happen. I didn't recompile the code. It must be the IDE that did it. That's fine. Okay, so there you go. We we just solved uh, evens for for Java. Nice nice work. And um, yeah, so now what we can do is we can take this answer. It might not like how we re we return everything, but let's try it. We go back to the browser, and it's looking for uh, it's looking for an answer. So let's go down to the challenge, right? And let's put our answer in there. And we're gonna put that in there. Let's see what we got, what we got here. Is everything what we think it should be? Ba, 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 ba. We're gonna run it. And it ran on all of our test cases and gave it back what it uh, what belonged. So now if we submit it, let's see if we passed our coding exam. We passed our coding exam. Nice work, everyone. So we have correctly solved it. If you want to look at a different answer, you can. I don't feel like I need to because we solved it and we solved it pretty well. Um, I will look at it. Look at this. They did the same thing. Find number of odd elements in R. So I don't know why they gave us this, the initial code or whatever that looked, <coughs> looked the way it did, but fine with me. Okay. So... Mm, can we do this in 20 minutes? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let me just check to see where we're at here. No, I'm going to um, I'm gonna call it here. I'm going to take a break, and then I'm going to come back in like 20 minutes to start RPing. So uh, stick around in 20 minutes, and we'll, uh, we'll play Wild RP. All right, y'all. Appreciate it. Adios.